Okay, so here's the homework assignment. Tonight. This is example three from our 1.3.2 notes. Um, it says an investment of $500 is compounded monthly at an annual rate of 3%. What is the equation that models the situation and then graph that equation? So I'll go ahead and start underlining our known values. So we know we have an investment of $500. We know it's compounded monthly and I have an annual rate of 3%. Uh, unknown values would be um, number of years that we will have this investment for, and then we also don't know the final amount of money. Okay, so like we talked about today, number of time periods will always be our x variable on these examples, so x would be number of years. And even though this says monthly, um, we don't want to say number of months because that's going to be represented when we talk about our n value for number of compounding periods in a year. So y would represent the final amount of money, and then we'll attach some units to that. We'll say in dollars. Okay, so build an equation. Um, we look back at our notes from today. We have compound interest, and we know it's going to follow this formula. Um, we said we would make this look a little bit more like what we're used to with exponential. Instead of A, let's use Y. And instead of our T variable, we're going to use X. So if I recopy that, so Y equals... Um, not that for principal times 1 plus r over n raised to the n x power. Okay, so we know y and x will remain as variables. Um, p is my principal, so I have uh, $500 to start. 500, 1 plus, my rate is 3%, and we're actually going to divide 3 by 100. Just 0.03, um, because we never want to use the percent, we always want to use the decimal when we're calculating. N represents the number of compounding periods, and we said we were going to compound monthly, which means in one year I will compound 12 times. So N, my denominator here would be 12, and then just to be careful, I'm going to put my exponent in parentheses because we do have two terms being multiplied together. So I have N which we just said was 12, and I'm going to leave x as x. So we have a calculator, y equals, and plug it in. Okay, the other option that you could do for writing the equation, we could simplify what's here in parentheses. So if we did that, it would be y equals 500 times, and then let's go double check what that would be, 1 plus 0.03 divided by 12 is this 1.0025. So we said that if this was like a multiple choice question, I might give you this as an answer choice. And you'd be responsible for recognizing that this 1.0025 is actually the same value as 1 plus 0.03 over 12. So you're free to type either one since I already have um, the one with the fraction. I'll just leave it as is. So we haven't talked about graphing on the calculator, so I'm not going to look at the graph yet, but we will look at our table. So you'll see I have second graph will give me access to the table. And looks like this calculator, it started at like an x value of 16. It's going up by 1. If I want to change these x values that are visible to me, um, just above this window key, you'll see in yellow I have table set, so I can hit second window to access table settings. Table start is going to be our first uh, first x value that we see, and I want to start at zero because I want to know, you know, that first value that I have when I start with is 500. That's going to show up when x is zero. And since this is going to be exponential, we know exponential kind of starts out flat, looking a little linear. Over time, it really gets that exponential curve to it. So let's space this out and we'll say I'm going to count every five years 
so that on my graph I can look out over a longer period of time. So if I look at my table, um, let's go ahead and enter some of these values into our table on our uh, homework problem here. And since we're dealing with money, I only have to go two decimal spots. So this is X, this is Y. Um, remember, X is the number of years, so we'll check for 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35. Y values is our final value of money in the account in dollars. That's 500, 580.81. We can look beyond what's visible. So 35 years would be 1427. Another trick, this 1427 isn't exactly 1427. If you put the cursor over it, you'll see down here it's actually 1426 and 95 cents. So let me switch that. Six and 96 cents. Okay. So the one thing that was giving us a lot of trouble on graphing was, okay, I have my y-axis here, and I have my x-axis. How do I know how to scale it? Well, let's look at the x-axis first. I need to go from 0 to about 35. I don't have to have 35 be this last line. Maybe 35 will be right here. Maybe it'll be right here. I'm not really sure. We have to do a little bit of calculating. But it doesn't have to fit perfectly. You can go a little bit beyond that. So... We said if you take the number of boxes that you have, uh, I'm sorry, if you take your highest X value divided by the number of boxes, that'll give you an idea for what to count by. So if I check real quick, um, 35 is the highest X value divided by, I have 20 boxes here, and that's going to give us a little less than 2. Let's see, 35 divided by 22 is 1.59. So clearly it doesn't make sense to count by 1.59. But I don't want to count by less than that, so let's just count by twos. Um, that'll make sure that I have enough room. So every box is going to represent two years. So this first one is two, the second one is four, third one is six, eight. And here's the other thing: you don't have to actually label every box like this because then it gets really crowded. As long as you are counting each box, you can actually just label every other one or every third one or whatever makes the most sense for you. So fourteen. 16, 18, 20, 24, 28, 22, 26, 40. So I'm actually going out to 44 years. Number five years. Okay, so we can do the same thing with our Y values. Uh, my biggest value is 1426.96. Let's call it 1427. So if I take my highest Y value divided by, vertically I have 22 boxes, divided by 22. And 1427 divided by 22 gives me 64.86. Again, I don't want to count by that. Let's count by something higher. Um, to me... Maybe counting by 75s is a nice round number because I'll have 75 and then 150 and 225 then 300. Those seem like good numbers to me, but we talked in class. Maybe you pick 65. Maybe you pick 70. Maybe you pick 100. Okay, I'm going to go by 75. This. Okay, so 75. Means this would be 150, 225, this would be 300. I'll go ahead and get these labeled. Okay, and this was going to be. Um, 
final amount of money in dollars. Okay, so the last thing to do here is, well, first I should title this. Um, maybe we'll say money in savings account at 3% interest. Okay, some, some sort of title so we know what we're looking at. Um, I'll do the plotting points in black. Let me zoom in a little bit. So the first one was 0, 0,500. So 0. About right here, you're going to kind of approximate since you are counting by 150. I'm sorry, you're counting by 75. You're going to have to approximate a little bit for where these points go. Um, 5, 580. So a little less than 600. So plotted from zero to 35 years, and we can see this isn't exactly a sharp turn like we're typically seeing in an exponential graph, um, but it's not quite linear. So let's connect this. Um, we can curve up smoothly. I missed that last dot. Um, we can see it's not exactly linear, which is good. Um, the reason this is not as sharp of an upturn is because it's a pretty small growth rate, 3%. If I was looking at something like 6%, 10%, um, then we'd see something a little more steep like we're used to seeing from an exponential curve. Uh, also, if I were to look out further um, beyond 35 years, if I was going out for maybe 100 years, then you'd start seeing a little more of an uptick uh, in the rate of change out towards the end of the graph. But um, this looks pretty good. And let's see what else we have here. What's the y-intercept would be the last question here. We haven't really talked about asymptotes yet, so that last one we'll skip. But uh, the y-intercept is 0, 0,500, so I want the coordinates. And then the significance of that in context with the problem. Well, just to recap, 0 is the number of years. I'm sorry, x is the number of years. Y is the final amount of money in the account in dollars. So since we have x, comma y, it means I have 0 years and $500. All we're really saying there is... Um, the initial deposit, right, because it's after zero years, it's immediate. Uh, the initial deposit was $500 into the savings account. should be good.